Uh, I have here with me Toril Irem, Irem Pedersen, who is the policy director for the Tax for Development program at NORAD, um, the Norwegian Agency for Development Co Cooperation. And just uh, wanted to give a short introduction on Toril. Uh, so in addition to working up for NORAD, she has worked for as long as 13 years inside the United Nations system in various positions and organizations, including the UNDP, UN Habitat, UN Population Fund and UNICEF. Uh, she has uh, focused on a var wide variety of governance and public management issues, including support to local governance, governments, uh, expenditure and revenue management, land governance, and also gender in public administration. Uh, she has also worked on issues related to many specific developing countries, including Uganda, Kenya, uh, Somalia and Rwanda, in addition to work in different uh, global and regional programs. Uh, okay, so in terms of how the fireside chat works, I'll have some conver conversation topics and questions for Tori myself, but I would also welcome anyone in the audience to uh, ask questions as well. You can write your questions in the Q&A area uh, in, the, in the platform, or if possible, you can also press the button at the top of the screen to ask to share your audio and video and ask your question from Tori uh, out loud as well. So uh, I'd like to start with a few questions of my own. Um, so Tori, could you first give a short introduction to your employer, NORAD? And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the organization and what is it in a nutshell that you do? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. This is a rare opportunity for a fireside chat. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, no, so Nora, like you mentioned, is the is the Norwegian Directorate uh, for Development Corporation, and um, uh, we are uh, organized under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, but with our own mandate when it comes to um, managing the largest part of the development aid budget, uh, and also we have a mandate in uh, terms of. Um, uh, public discourse and information uh, to. To, to people in Norway, so not so much the external, but the, but within Norway. That's in a nutshell what the NORAD does. Thanks, uh, good to have a brief introduction. Uh, I'd also like to hear more about your Tax for Development program, which focuses on increased domestic revenue mobilization, among, among other things. So could you talk a little bit about why domestic resource mobilization is important? And also, what types of insight do you think can be gained from related research, such as the research we do here at WIDER? So I'm kind of interested why the research angle is so important for this specific program. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Tax for Development has gone through different phases in uh, NORAD. Um, the first phase was very much a purely bilateral um, capacity development program. Uh, and now it's transformed into more of a portfolio um, approach where we have very many different components and I can come back to the research component but um, but the way we've organized the program is that we have two um, kind of two outcomes areas that that are important and that should be balanced um, in any intervention that we support is the one side is a revenue uh, mobilization like you said but on the other side is the social contract so in that sense you know if we we're formed it as a, very much as a governance um, program. Um, and with the, that kind of a broad uh, entry point to tackling tax and development, uh, there are a lot of uh, unknowns uh, in terms of what are the right approaches and, and uh, what are the right kind of policy uh, directions that we, one should be promoting for different kinds of countries, low income, middle income, and etc. And that's part of the reason why we have quite a substantial part on research um, that we fund, uh, including the work at UNU Wider. Um, and we think it's important that our research partners of the portfolio has that uh, double uh, purpose, like um, what we see um, at UNU Wider uh, of both working on the capacity, making it, making it relevant, so directly uh, impacting um, developments in partner countries, but also making that global uh, knowledge that can help us, um, help us shape our 
uh, interventions from the from the development partner side. So that's that's also kind of a dual focus of the research component. Um, yeah. Right. Um, maybe maybe somewhat related. Uh, I'd also like to know more about uh, NORAD's new strategy 2030 that came out uh, last March. Basically, uh, what's your overarching vision going forward and also the related priorities? And I'd also like to know a little bit more about if there are any differences between the priorities you've adopted at NORAD and other development agencies in other countries have developed, uh, adopted. Mm. Um, yeah, so we've gone through a bit of um, a strategy process over the last year and a half, I guess, before it was uh, launched. And the idea is um, it came out of a, a bigger reorganization in terms of uh, the responsibilities uh, divided between the ministry and the NORAD as the directorate. So with more responsibility for the development aid budget, there was also a need to look at, you know, how can we work more um, eff effectively and efficiently um, to manage the resources. So the strategy has um, a few different uh, focus areas um, in terms of um, use being more strategic um, in the way that we manage the the, um, the um, development aid budget. Uh, it also has a strong focus on being more knowledge based and uh, and using um, research and um, evidence more directly into our into the. Um, uh, the combined development aid budgets, but also on the subsets, and also a much stronger focus on being um, being um, an uh, climate and environment actor. So not only in the programs that we support, but also the way that we run the organization and organize. It. So increasingly, we will we have um, uh, also uh, organized our organize or the whole structure around the uh, sustainable development goals. So move from um, from a more thematic um, organization previously, we're now organized quite firmly around the, um, the sustainable development goals. And we have three bigger departments on partnership and prosperity, human development and climate and environment. So, so that it should be easier for also our partners to recognize themselves in the organization from, from, from that angle. Thanks. Um, yeah, I've, I've asked a lot of questions about the organization and the programs and, and so on, but maybe I'd like to know more about specific topics that we've also talked about here uh, at the conference. So I think uh, in the recent days here, we've learned a lot about the negative impacts of COVID-19 on uh, livelihoods, poverty and also uh, public revenues. So um, I'd like to ask, uh, based on your experience experience if you think there are any new opportunities that have emerged from the pandemic especially concerning development basically has the pandemic taught us something that uh, might be helpful in addressing development challenges in the future including in your strategy at NORAD mm -hmm. yeah it's hard to it's hard to attribute anything positive to to the pandemic but i think um the fact that the crisis has been uh, so far reaching and um, has kind of pushed the development community and the international community to, to be a bit more bold uh, in terms of finding um, solutions. And I think we see the, that there are processes at the international level, at the global level, in terms of developing tools, um, some changes in the normative um, and standards. We see that in the tax world, world develop de definitely, but also when it comes to digital public goods. Um, so if we're able to kind of connect these um, to uh, and adapt them, I think, to support countries to adapt them to their needs and capacities. So, low and middle income countries could be a possibility um, to to maybe leapfrog some some um, some of these obstacles and i think on the other side i think we've we've seen the importance of of uh, resilient governance structures and uh, and what the having legitimate um governments and governance that are built on transparency um what it means uh, in terms of crisis. So I'm 
I'm can you say hopeful or maybe optimistic that this also can give us a bit of a push uh, for for a much more you know future focused uh, governance um, uh, structures and bridging that gap between this ideal of of um, developing new standards tools and methodologies at the global level and really like making it them relevant um, at the at the country level that I think there's an opportunity we've seen how connected um we all are uh and kind of yeah uh unearth a lot of the uh very very big challenges both at the global and at the national level mm. mm -hmm. thanks um and uh I, I kind of have a related question about uh kind of similar les lessons maybe based on what you've learned while working in the un system and also at norad uh, so, as most of us in this conference work in issues around international development, one way or another, uh, we keep hearing about different policy recommendations and strategies coming from different directions that me people think might be effective for development in a general sense or in a more specific sense. So, I'd like to ask, based on your experiments, experience, uh, is there something that you think would be effective for development that may be undervalued or underrated by say the average development professional or researcher so in a nutshell what do you think that works that may be not appreciated in the community enough um i yeah it's a it's a very big question but i think what it's can kind of take a different approach to it is that some things we know work mm, we know that uh, and we don't need to Kind of over uh, test and 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 research and uh, the things that we know really works um, and we know that you know getting services uh, to people um, there are some mechanisms in which are more efficient in 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 that sense so I really think that we need to be bolder and doing more of uh, of um, things that we know work. Uh, without being too concerned with always being able to mm, measure the direct impact of our interventions um, in the short to medium term, because these systems need to mature over time. And I think one one area here that I hope that we can be a bit more bold um, going forward is also on, for instance, on cash transfers, um, even unconditional cash transfers. And we know that it's difficult when we're when we're trying to target uh, um, very vulnerable groups. I'm, and I'm not saying that that's not important, but this is something that I think you know we need to come to together. And our own systems from from the Scandinavian countries, we know that these universal um, uh, strategies in terms of. Uh, um, whether it's cash transfers or universal access to services that are publicly funded pre predominantly um, is going to be important. And, when, and uh, uh, so in that sense, you know, linking uh, the tax and revenue work um, to more of these uh, universal um, public good strategies. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think it's something that we should definitely come together and do more of. We're not going to be able to manage the setbacks um, by having a very project by project approach. I think it's. Um, I think something on the systems um, uh, is where we need to put our focus. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned un unconditional un sorry unconditional cash transfers, which you know basic income solutions might be might be one of those alternatives. Do you, have you seen examples in parts of the world, especially developing countries, that have, you know, some some promising uh, solutions that are akin to unconditional cash transfers that might be adopted elsewhere? Yeah, I think we've seen in some parts of the world, but very often tied to uh, pro projects and development aid projects. Um, and uh, I had I had a talk with a colleague earlier today, also who who very rightly also commented that uh, um, you know for the lowest income countries even when you do a full equal redistribution the con the population is still going to be under the poverty line mm -hmm. so i think that's that we it, we might need to to
to uh, have a more uh, diversified strategy looking at the you know what works in one in a very low income country might not work uh, all the other way around middle income country might not work at a very low income country so uh, and uh, in terms of where condition unconditional uh, cash transfers have worked I I would be hesitant to <laughs> to say, uh, but I do think there's a lot of potential in building the systems. And then, even when there are might not be very 100% successful, uh, and that we can say that for sure, in most of the Scandinavian approaches, it was also not 100% successful mm. from the beginning. Right. Um, I do have a few questions of my own still, but I'm wondering if anybody in the audience wants to ask something or share their screen and audio to ask questions or write in the Q&A, uh, feel free to do so as well. Um, at the moment, I don't see anything, so maybe maybe I can uh, go on. Um, so, you know, looking at your background, seeing you you have worked uh, in the un system for so many years and then coming to coming to nora to uh work in your home country uh how would you how would you um uh, compare these two experiences both internationally in the un system and now home at, at norad mm, i mean the main difference is how close you work with the with the mm, beneficiaries and the target uh, of your target po population of your work mm -hmm. Uh, and that's quite a transition, um, you know, moving to the donor side and moving home to, to Norway. But um, uh, I think what's important is also that there's a lot of people in Norway with similar backgrounds to, to mine. So keep, so at least we have that shared um, experience and bringing that perspective, I think, is very, it's very, very important. Um, so it's a different way of working, for sure. Uh, the 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 you mean say the very um, protective system for workers in in uh, in Norway is not something you find everywhere. And also, there's a sense of urgency. You know, when you work at the country level, uh, the ur the sense of urgency feels different, um, even if you're working on the same uh, cases. And I and I think that's also important when we work with partners now. You know, to remember that our, our partner countries often work with very few resources um, to and it's an insurmountable task often um, so if a revenue administration in in Rwanda works with the fraction uh, of the um, of the staff and money of the revenue administration in Norway but are expected to deliver the same results uh, so that's kind of a, that the awareness um, or you become very aware uh, of that constantly when you're working more on the country levels with the with the uh, with the UN but um, luckily we have um, very vocal and good partnerships so we're also reminded about that even when we work here mm -hmm. um, I'm still looking at the Q&A section not many questions here so maybe I can close this with uh, an even more personal question about your typical work day. For instance, today before this uh, this fireside chat, what did you do at NORAD if if you were working today? <laughs> yes, I was working today <laughs> from morning. I mean, it's uh, like we said, we've just gone through last week uh, reorganization, so we all uh, we've all. Uh, um, we've all been moving boxes, both like literally and physically, uh, and and figuratively in in the new organization. So uh, today we've had mostly uh, meetings, meetings related to uh, both on the operational side, you know, the recruitments and filling the new structures. Uh, but then we've also had a lot of we had interesting discussions on on uh, uh, a lot of program management um issues so it's a, it's a very it's quite diverse but i have to say there's a uh yeah you, ha you have to really uh prioritize the the substantive parts because otherwise the the uh, uh the operational side can can swallow you alive so today i've put aside a lot of time to work on a 
some proposals for governance and equality. So, uh, and that's that's interesting because then I get to talk to a lot of colleagues, get their perspectives, uh, and see what could be new priorities for for Nora and going forward. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good good lessons for everyone in terms of keeping the bureaucracy side down and operations side down and actually focusing on the substantive part of the work. But I think uh, 20 minutes is up and I didn't see any questions from the audience. So uh, I think we can close this here. Thanks so much, Storil, for coming to the fireside chat and sharing Thank all you. these insights. Thank you. It was a very nice conversation. All right. And thanks for everyone in the audience and Anna from Wider Coms as well for helping out. And uh, I think we can close it here.